What is your ethnicity? I'm Asian and Nordic. So my mum's Asian and my dad is Irish. She was born in Singapore, but her parents were born in India. Um, I am Bengali. Um, Swedish and, and Sri Lankan. I am half Jamaican and a quarter Af Afghani and a quarter Indian. So my ethnic background, I'm ethnically Pakistani, so I would click, always tick Pakistani. What is your race? Um, I tick white and Asian mixed, but yeah, I don't really identify with either. I am Asian mixed with white. I am mixed white and Asian. Uh, well, race-wise, I am Bengali. I am brown. Pakistani, British. What do you identify as? British. But I think British is a race as well, because it's a mix of all nationalities. I identify as mixed. Growing up in London, it's so diverse, so I never felt like it has to be one certain thing. I think I'm a bit of both in English culture and Bengali culture. Like, I was born here, and then my parents went back, and I lived there most of my life, and then I moved here back in 2014. I call myself a world citizen. I was born in Germany. I moved to the UK when I was three. I've never actually lived in my ethnic background, Pakistan. British. London. I would say Germany or British. I call myself a world citizen. Hombre del mundo. I'm a man of the world. And we should be able to go anywhere, see things, and I see good parts from different parts of the world. What would you say you feel more? More of my family, when I was growing up, were from Asia, from my dad's side of family from Sri Lanka. It, it depends on, on the character and the time of year. I am white sometimes, and sometimes I'm very brown. I guess because I'm around friends that are mainly, mainly white, um, I feel like that has sort of an influence. But going, I go to like Asia, like I go and visit Asia more often than I do um, Ireland, so I feel like... Um, I don't know, I'd say it's 50 50. I don't feel like I'm more one than the other. Right, so that would be whether I lean more towards the Asian side or more towards the. Uh, um, based on the way I appear, I'd say probably more towards the Jamaican side. Do you feel you can adapt pretty easily? Yeah, but I fit in all sorts of countries. Like in the summer, when I'm in Caracas or wherever I'm in Ibiza or wherever I'm in. Uh, where were we in Turkey? Mm -hmm. After a while, if I'm mixing with people from the area, all of a sudden people just talk start strangers will just start talking to me in the lingo anyway. Mm -hmm. And I've had the same in Sri Lanka. Because when I've gone to Sweden, mm -hmm. then they'll just say automatically you're English. As someone who is mixed race, do you think it will still be necessary to state your race in the future? Well, I think the line has been crossed now. I think we are what country we are, actually. I think you are where you are from. I was born here, I was raised here, my family met here, produced us here, we grew here. I think we're just, we're London or South London. Yeah, I think it's where, I think it's where you grow up rather than you know, and I think I've grown up in England, mm. in South London. Okay. So. Mm. I don't know whether it is just that, that people are just scared of different people that are different. Have you ever been misidentified? Of course I have. Um, yeah, but all the time. I feel like people can't, people don't, can't just pick out the nationality easily when they look at me. I've had people being like, oh, you... They, they just assume, they're like, oh, you like Turkish, are you, like, I don't know. And then I feel like when I say I'm Irish and Asian, I can't tell which one they're more surprised about. <laughs> yeah, I had a British guy yeah. last week who knows my nationality is from uni and yeah. just randomly goes, you look like you could be Mexican. I was like, you know where I'm from. <laughs> I feel like yeah. some people just get confused when people are mixed. The thing is, always people have this argument whenever I, whenever I talk to them. And I'm always like, when you ask me where am I from, you're not being precise enough. Be like, what's your ethnic background? Yeah. It's like, it's a, there's loads of different things. Because like, I would class myself as a British citizen. I live here, it's not my home country, but it's my home. Mm -hmm. I always, have, always end up having like, talks with people whenever they ask me where am I from. 
and then how to explain it and then like and then some people say oh yeah that makes sense yeah you're German and then some people will be like no no you're Pakistani and other people will be like you've been here since you're free you're British how did that make you feel very angry and that was before mm-hmm. and now I can misidentify them more than they misidentify me because I can um, say things which will make them double think. Like the time I got told, why are you pulling your car up there at the bus stop? And I wasn't at the bus, I was in front of the bus stop, taking our shopping out of the car. And, you know, remember we used to live here? There was no double red lines back in the day. Okay, we had the bus stop there, but we was in front of it. Mm-hmm. You know, emptying the car to get all the, the shopping and the, and the prams and the children upstairs and this, that and the other. And... Go back to your country. I'm like, whoa, I sold a minute. Go back to my country. Why are you at the bus stop for? Because you ain't got a British uh, driving licence, have you? Ha, 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 I have. And guess what? I was born in Britain. Ha, <laughs> I've got a British birth certificate and a British passport. Um, I think at first I was probably a bit like, hmm why is that important but I think mm-hmm. because I'm so used to it now because I get it so often I literally got one last week someone asked me where I'm from um mm-hmm. I feel like now I'm just like it is what it is I'm just used to being asked this question now have you been directly affected by colorism no not at all between the cousins even the mixed ones we wanted to be the darkest I don't know what it's like with the all inclusive Sri Lankan sides of the family. Mm-hmm. I only I've only ever thought about it. I've only had it once properly when I was in Sri Lanka. If not us personally, they don't go out on the beach. They don't want to get dark. Try and be white because it makes them look like they come a different class of work. Mm-hmm. And then on the building site a couple of times. Um, no, I don't think I've experienced anything like that. To be fair, I don't think I've had anything bad. Like I've mm-hmm. never been treated like differently or anything like that. I suppose like when I go and visit. Asia you do get you get like you get treated differently I think but not in a bad way like I'd go and they'd like you'd get constant looks and stuff or they'd see because I'm quite like I'm lighter skin than I am darker skin mm-hmm. they would be like they would like always like favor you on like touristy things like they'd let me go to the front of the queue I don't know they'd probably expect that you have more money or want to do yeah this is what colonialism does to you because Farah is associated with wealth beauty and just generally you're well to do your kids are going to be better i don't know it's like a predisposed way of thinking well growing up i used to think um beauty standards wise tourism so people who are darker are considered less beautiful than someone who's probably like fairer it's always been i've uh, suffered through it myself because my mum always used to be like oh why are you so dark like i used to think it was something bad like okay if you're darker you're not pretty I've basically yeah so um people who've been lighter than me or something see even now my mum would be like oh you look so much better now like before I used to get very tanned tanning is not a thing back home you don't tan because the lighter you are the prettier you are or it's very ethnocentric I suppose like fairer skin nice like whatever complexion it's called a nice complexion I suppose and yeah, you get a, bo- a lot of um, kind of discrimination as well. Like darker skin kind of represented poor people. Um, so Farah, you should be like, oh, she's probably, you know, well-to-do, wealthy. Before I used to have a different kind of opinion, but then I learned it myself. I said, um, went through it myself and I just realized it's just silly. It's very silly because uh, someone's skin color, someone's um, like the way they look shouldn't define how they are or how they should be treated because it was a lot of like oh maybe I am not like the standard of um beauty or standard of what a Bengali girl should look or anything like that but then I just don't care anymore <laughs> I feel like back home it's a lot more people will look and they won't treat you different but they will give you judgments whereas here it's more I think it'll be more verbal or people will make it known. In here, I feel like uh, in here, colorism's like a little bit less. It's more racism. It will go more towards racism in this country. Yeah, it's about home. Back home, it's more just a bit of judgment, quiet judgment. Or they will just basically consider you 
ugly or something and I always I was very sporty so I was always out in the sun which is why I got like when I was born my mom was just like oh my god my baby she's so white I was like a white baby as I got older obviously I my dad's darker skinned my mom's very fair like she's comparatively very fair so my mom my dad like obviously I got my dad's skin tone like I just you know inherited that so I used to be always out in the sun always playing cricket with my brother my mom used to always just be like she even had a whole thing where she would put like um sandalwood paste on our face just to lighten us up it didn't do nothing in my head I'd always had that thing where I want to be a bit lighter pretty like a, a man can get away with it a man can be darker but as a woman you used to be a bit lighter um probably only when i was probably in birmingham when there were less um a, there weren't any asian or black people i think once someone called me a name and it really upset me but um because because i'm quite fair anyway um people have always assumed that I think they've just assumed that I'm white or Spanish or something like that. So I've never really had more of the most issue. The issue that I have more of is is not being identified as as white or Spanish. So yeah, because they've assumed that I'm white, so they'll treat me as as that. Not mistreatment, but I think I was probably treated better by my grandmother because I was paler. Not really. I haven't. Well, I haven't really experienced it. I think maybe because I'm fair. Um, yeah, not really. I haven't found it to be honest. Maybe because I'm fair, they just assume that that I'm right, so I'm not treated any differently. Um, I know that Mark, my brother Mark, did have some issues when he was in Birmingham, so where there weren't any darker skinned people because he is darker skinned than me he used to get called names a lot so but I think that's also to, a lot to do with his personality as well and because he's more confrontational than I would be he would rather than not laughing it off or just ignoring it he would he wouldn't well the only other things maybe when I was at in primary school um I think no one used to be horrible to to me or to my dad, but I think someone said, "Oh, I wish he was my dad." Apart from the fact that he's brown, so they 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 said they would like him to be their dad because he's fun, but not but they wouldn't because because he's brown, so they wouldn't want to have a brown dad basically. Yeah, I did feel a bit uncomfortable about it. That's what makes me think that there's only been a few incidents like that because they I remember them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's it's been like a constant in my life because I can remember each incident yeah so I've had it the other way where I've been out with Asian people and um I felt like I was treated differently because I was white mm. I think my friend said that they, the only reason that the men would like me is because I'm white and I take it from that that they think white girls are easier than Asian girls but that was all that was years ago though right I personally haven't experienced it, but my parents certainly have when they were growing up in Nederland, London. My, my father grew up in Wimbledon and uh, his family were treated relatively quite badly given you know, the time that they were growing up in. You know, they grew up in the 70s and then the 80s, so they had to go through quite a lot of uh, hardships. You know, they, they were called derogatory names by their neighbours, uh, even attacked on, on a couple of occasions. So. I'm thankful that I haven't had to encounter that in, in, in my lifetime. I mean, it resonates with me. I, I, I can definitely see the effects of it in, in, in certain parts of the world. Let's talk about racial imposter syndrome. So to my definition, it's essentially feeling like a fraud within your own race. Do you believe this may be something that you've experienced? I don't know about that because I'm just a fraud of all the races. I know, but as a, that was a joke. Mm. I'm just all of this like... People said, oh, do you feel confused? Do you feel this and do you feel that? I'm like, I ain't confused. I just get to know everything. Brilliant. Embrace it all. How much of this world have I got to offer? And they've offered me Swedish meatballs and fish curry. I mean, come on. <laughs> I just said, we just enjoyed life, man. I think I, de I definitely get I get it when I go to Ireland because I feel like I don't fit in there. Because, mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel, feel like I don't fit in there. And then I go to Asia and I... 
I still don't feel like I fit in there like I only really feel like myself when I'm in England really not that I don't enjoy the culture on both mm-hmm. sides like I I did Irish dancing for years when I was younger I like watching Indian films and listening to mu- Indian music and mm-hmm. cooking the food but yeah I don't know it's different when you're actually in the country because I'm a lot I'm a lot lighter than everyone on my mom's side and a lot darker than everyone on my dad's side so and like I feel like I only really feel it when I go to not necessarily Ireland but when I go to more of the Asian side when I go there and it's the language thing is definitely the language thing or like the the looks you get when you're just walking down the street just because you're a bit like lighter Hmm. or yeah but otherwise not really no see I haven't felt that because I don't come from two different kind of races I feel like it biracial kids suffer that a lot more than someone who comes from like both Bengali parents or both similar races but I felt like I needed to do a lot more standard European things to feel a bit more fitted in well yeah because I never felt like I was Asian or Sri Lankan or you know I'm just British and I've, I would never think of anywhere else as my home as some people who were born here and still think their home is another country mm-hmm. but to me this is my home so I'm from England I support England football team I, I eat English food and you know it's who I I'm I am. I've always, I used to always say I was, I was English, but mm-hmm. I think my mum's always said to me, "You can't. You're not English. You're British." So that's probably it. The, okay. The, <laughs> putting that d- yeah. on me. Uh, I used to go to Sweden nearly every year, and mm. you know, but I still didn't class myself as being Swedish. Mm. So, mm. And, and when I would go there, they would sort of call me English. I think it's if, if like some communities where they just mix with people of that community, um, like you say, they speak that language to each other. Um, I don't know, they go, they have a different religion maybe, so they visit, I don't know, the temple or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Whereas even my Sri Lankan family don't act Sri Lankan as such. They don't speak Sri Lankan to each other. They don't and it sounds Sri Lankan, they don't necessarily always eat Sri Lankan food, mm-hmm. they don't just mix with Sri Lankan people, uh, they don't, we don't have specific religion or anything like that where we would need to go every month or week or whatever. Yeah, I don't really, I don't know, I don't feel like, I feel like I'm British, I don't feel anything else to be honest, I feel mm. like I'm from here and mm. most of my, all my friends were born here and come from here a lot of them probably are English mm. so you know my partners are all English or born here so mm. maybe that's that's why I mean I think we live in the most probably diversity in, in, in the entire world mm-hmm. so everyone is allowed to fit in and have their own kind of character mm-hmm. which I, I, I think is great so I never really take on board the fact that I'm brown skin and this person's white or darker than me or whatever I mean everyone's unique and everyone is who they are for who they should be of course of course I haven't actually been to Jamaica or, or India right? you know one day I want to go to them to see what it's like there how my parents well sorry my grandparents probably grew up mm-hmm. so uh, seeing the, the villages and stuff like that would, would, be, would be cool mm-hmm. and they're just also seeing their day-to-day life because I mean, here in, in England, you know, a first world country, we've got everything at our fingertips. Yeah. So I think you take a lot of it for granted when you actually go to somewhere like the West Indies and you probably would see a lot of differences in their day to day living. For sure, for sure. I mean, I would say a little bit, but not because of people around me, but because of maybe my, my, just my, myself and my own uh, desires to, mm-hmm. to probably learn more. Mm-hmm. Like speaking the language where my uh, grandfather grew up. Mm-hmm. So speaking, uh, you know, whether it's Arabic or Urdu or Pashto, mm-hmm. wherever it could be, like being able to speak that and understand it would be, you know, much, uh, it would be a benefit for sure. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say I've, I've been left out because of that. I think I've always been included in, in any uh, kind of scenario where that might be a factor. I would say in minor ways, in terms of someone's mentioning something or speaking about something that I don't know about. 
and, and stuff like that, or in minor ways where it's just, it's just kind of, yeah, where people just mention something small or say something, even like not even talking to me, talking amongst themselves. You, this has even happened with people my age. Mm -hmm. they just, they'll speak uh, Punjabi, basically, which I don't know, right? Or they'll, which is basically like slang and then it's like, I won't pick that up because mm -hmm. I don't know. So I won't understand what it's mean. Or they'll just be, they'll just talk in a certain way, which I won't understand. Which is then I'm just like, I'm just like I'll stick to English, or I'll stick mm -hmm. to speaking to someone else, yeah. And I'm just like, I can't get involved in that. Either. Do you think language plays a part in racial imposter syndrome? Yeah, I think yeah, it probably does play a part in it because my mum didn't teach me, um, so she speaks Indian fluently, but mm -hmm. she only does that in India or with when she's with her family, but she didn't teach me. So because we just speak English at home all the time, probably yeah. that really helps with the feeling more white side. Yes, I can speak, I do. Mm -hmm. I can't um, read it or write it, but I can yeah, speak, speak it at home with yeah, like your parents. Speak it at home, yeah. mm -hmm. and like with other people as well. Yeah, and you practice, um, you're Muslim, practicing yes. Muslim as yeah, well, so yeah. you speak it when you're doing Yeah, yeah, when I'm at the mosque, yeah. stuff like that, yeah, yeah okay, all the time. Enough. So you say like in terms of like your Pakistani like heritage and everything, you say you're quite in touch with them, even though... I'll say I'm quite, to be fair, I'll say I'm quite in touch with the... Because the thing is, there's a big difference between culture and religion yes so i'd say i'm mm -hmm. quite in touch with my religious side and i'm only not as much in touch with the cult cultural side okay to be honest i'm i don't all the simple stuff and stuff yeah but it's never going to be the same as someone who's like born or raised in pakistan for example so yes, like yeah. even my like i do isn't as good as other people's sure. because i wasn't i never lived there so mm -hmm. it's like Yes, it's decent and it's good, and I am Pakistani, but I'm not, like, you know, a lot Pakistani. It's difficult. Yeah, no. Loads of words I know in German, mm -hmm. because I've learned them through, like, my parents yeah, yeah. saying it in German. So do they speak German? So my mum will, my mum's fluent in German. Okay. My dad's German is pretty decent, mm -hmm. but my mum will tend to use German words a lot. So okay. there'll be words I use that are German, like when I was younger, I know now, but when I was younger, I'll say the word, like Brutchen or Gelza, which is basically um, ban in English, I don't know what you'd call it in English, but like, you know, like just yeah. a ban, yeah. and then also a recycling bag, but okay. they're both German words, but I grew up saying them, Yeah. and I didn't know they were German. And they're just like... Yeah, but it depends on family members, because with my dad, I only speak Urdu, then with okay. my mum, I kind of speak Urdu mixed with English. English. And then with my sibling, it's mostly English and then a little bit of Urdu. And then German is like the certain words that I use with everyone. The sprinkles. Like even with my dad, my mum, my siblings, yeah. we all use. For example, any, whoever it is, like, all of us will say, change the girls up. We never say change the recycling bag or I don't even know what you'd call it in Urdu. But none of us would say that. All of us would say it in German. As someone who's white passing, tell me of a time that you've experienced racism around you. Yeah. There's people that would like, like I've I've had people like do an Indian accent. Like I don't think it I think it was in sort of like a mockery way. And then be like, oh shit, can I do that because you're from India? Like that sort of stuff. Like where they don't intentionally mean like harm, but mm. then they're like you're like hmm. it's different when it's a friend and when it's a stranger because you don't know their intentions. Yeah, and you can express that to a friend and be like, listen no, that's not okay. Yeah, getting too big for you. How can we move forward? I think people weren't 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 afraid to talk about it. I mean I might I might start calling people words but but I might not realize that that's offensive so if I was allowed to say it and someone felt comfortable to say to me but in, not in a horrible way because I'm just being ignorant they might say to me look I don't appreciate being called that so I think maybe more discussion groups and that kind of thing where people can kind of be free to speak and not feel like they're going to be judged as being racist because they've said something because it might be to do with their background, how they've been brought up. And it, a lot of racism is, is just is ignorance, really. Once you know how, what it feels like mm. for someone to treat you like that, then you probably would never do that. Like, I think people are coming around to it because, like, our generation's making a little bit of change. I think, I mean, it's, it's a tough one. I think mm -hmm. probably a lot of it comes from media. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people's views stem from maybe 
their grandparents, great grandparents, you know, growing up in the 60s, 50s, you know, when racism was much more commonplace. Mm. So people that were portrayed in the media wouldn't have been as diverse as they are now. You know, now we see people that are all colours in all kinds of commercials for all kinds of products. Mm. There, there, there should be no real divide as to what one culture can do that another culture can't. You know, I, I think there should be just everyone can do, can do anything that they want to. So, yeah, back to the media point. You know, I think it comes to a, a lot of these uh, corporations showing that they are diverse because they are diverse in their heart, not because they're doing it to fit a quota. Say they have to hire X amount of black people or X amount of Asian people. Mm-hmm. They should just do it because that's the way they feel inside and that's what gives them joy. Hmm. So, yeah, I think it's, it's probably a bigger scale than just changing one person's views on, or two people's views on, on the of street. Course, yeah. It goes deeper into the way we are controlled to, mm-hmm. to an extent mm-hmm. by what we see on, on our phones, scrolling through Twitter, for example. You know, mm-hmm. the, the people, I mean, I mean, as you see on Twitter, that are geared towards a certain group of people. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of work to be done there. A lot of people who do like you, you go up to them and think, Yeah, he's brown, he's Pakistani, and the next thing you know, he's not, he doesn't know her. Dude. It's like he only knows English and he's born here. It's like, and it's like, Oh, it's exactly. okay, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you kind of assume stuff on how people look, mm-hmm. but they may not necessarily be the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was the same as like, for example, seeing a white person and then. You think, oh yeah, he's British, but then he's actually lived his whole life in, like, you know, in Pakistan or something. Exactly. You know, it's you like you don't know. You don't know, yeah. So yeah. it's very, it's very different. Yeah. Mm. See, that's a really tough one because the thing is, it's a lot of look. There's a lot of things that kind of like build into us. For example, let's take stereotypes, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of stereotypes are built from what was true back in the day, right? So they've just become that. Thing. Mm. But then it's like the thing is they still linger around because some in some hint or form they can probably still be true. But the problem is stereotypes take one little group, right, of people from mm. a specific thing mm. and then make the whole group that thing. So that's the big problem of stereotypes. So I think it's a lot to do with education, but really. I mean it's starting to be given in schools quite a lot, which mm. is good. And I think it will continue. And I think a lot of the you, I don't think you have that many racist people in the next new and next generation because there's a lot of it that was, you know, from the older generations. But then the problem is the older generations that, you know, still haven't learned, pass it down to their kids. So then it's up to their kids whether they would kind of learn or just go over what their parents have told them, for example. And I feel like if they get taught enough in school and they interact with people like in London you know you're going to school with so many different types of people you're meeting so many different types of people from various religions various faiths various you know races and stuff you start to realize that oh maybe what I was taught by my dad isn't true but I believe not to judge people by perception what they look like thanks for listening to what boxes do you tick looking at colorism, racial imposter syndrome, and being South Asian living in London. A very special thank you to everyone who took part. Bethany, Britt, Burhan, Mark, Nabila, Nahal, and Omar. It's been great opening up this conversation. I've been Sophia Pereira. Thanks again for listening.